garbage. It's as much a part of our lives as turning on the lights, running the tap, or making a phone call. It's funny, most of us know what we pay for utilities. Do you know how much you pay for your gas? Uh, well, my gas bill runs approximately $35 a month. $58 a month? I think it's about 60 bucks. But when it comes to garbage... I really don't know what, what it costs for my trash. How much do I pay for it? Yes. Um, nothing. I have no idea. I really don't know. You'd have to ask my wife. For most of us, when it comes to garbage, it's out of sight, out of mind. But garbage is very much on the minds of solid waste planners who must balance economic and environmental goals by controlling the rising costs of solid waste management while at the same time conserving our natural resources. We all think that uh, magically we, we put our trash, whether, whether we separate it or whether we don't, in a bin and we set it out and somebody picks it up and it's something that we don't consciously think about every day. What has to happen to dispose of that and, and what impact does it have cost-wise to us as citizens and what, what impact does it have to our environment? To help residents think more carefully about their garbage, many communities are turning to an innovative concept called unit-based pricing or pay-as-you-throw. Pay-as-you-throw? No. Is it the program where there are signs along the road that say if you litter, you have to pay fifty dollars? No, I never heard. Mm, no. Uh, you gotta give me some clues okay. here. So I've, I've heard of the program, but I'm not sure exactly where it fits yeah. in. Here. As the name implies, residents living in communities with a pay-as-you-throw program pay for garbage services based on the amount of trash they throw away. What pay-as-you-throw does is help all of us see that garbage, just like any service, has a cost. And in many communities, that cost is on the rise. There are tremendous pressures to, to reduce costs. Well, we're providing a wide range of services to, uh, to communities in terms of recycling, household hazardous waste collection, composting. There have been new regulatory requirements that have, been come, that have come in place recently. Those have driven up the costs as well. Most of us finance our trash services through property taxes, or we pay a fixed monthly or yearly fee, regardless of how much or how little trash we actually generate. Traditionally, solid waste management costs are hidden. They're hidden on your tax bill. Um, you don't know what they are. You don't know how much you're paying, and you can't do anything about it. Pay-as-you-throw breaks with tradition by treating garbage services like any other utility. The less you throw, the less you pay. If you put out one bag, you pay for that one bag. If I put out two bags, I pay for my two bags. And that's a more realistic way that society purchases its services. How do you buy stamps? How do you buy gas? How do you buy electric? How do you buy water? How do you buy garbage? And you buy it the same way. So how exactly do pay-as-you-throw programs work? In some communities, residents set out their trash in specially marked bags, which they purchase at local stores or municipal offices, while in others, residents buy special stickers or tags, which they affix to ordinary bags or cans. And some communities offer residents cans of various sizes and charge accordingly. A few communities are even implementing weight-based programs, in which crews literally weigh residents' trash at the curb. That's a good one, 72 pounds. Households then receive a bill for the amount of trash they set out each month. Regardless of the system used, pay-as-you-throw helps residents understand the costs of managing their garbage. At the same time, it provides them with an economic incentive to reduce the amount of waste they send to the landfill, reuse products and materials whenever possible, and recycle at every opportunity.
what we found for most communities around the country is that the main drivers for pay as you throw tend to fall in three categories. The first is environmental, and some communities are trying to have a goal of increasing their recycling rates or conserving their landfill capacity, or they're motivated by an environmental ethic. Every time we use a product, we often forget that that product came from somewhere and has to go somewhere. In fact, it came from raw materials. It had to be dug up out of the earth, had to be processed. All of that has environmental consequences that are only partially taken into account in determining the price of a product to the consumer. After that consumer uses the product and disposes of it, it has to go somewhere. And when it goes somewhere, that has environmental consequences as well. If that material goes down the drain or to a landfill or an incinerator, all of those have environmental as well as economic costs. You know, a uh, number of years ago, uh, people began to be concerned, are we a throwaway society? And we look at mountains of, of packaging, mountains of waste out, out there. And in a sense, one of the reasons for that is that waste wasn't on people's radar screen. And what pay as you throw does is it kind of puts a bee in your bonnet, oh my goodness, this waste costs something. And so for Americans, what it does is it puts waste on their radar screen, makes them think about it, so that next time they go out to the store, they think, gee, I might buy that bulk package instead of those little ones. Gee, I might buy that toothpaste that's not in the box, that's just a standalone container. I'm going to mulch mow. I'm going to leave the grass clippings on the lawn. And what it's doing is telling us that as waste, as consumers, we become more efficient when we're when we're more discriminating about the kinds of products that we use and consume. If there's a price attached to what, what's left over from our consumption behavior, then it's going to cause us to think twice about the kinds of products we consume. The general public believes that this is a good example of where uh, local government has done a good job with a particular program. Um, and uh, that translates into how people view uh, conservation, not just of uh, of resources through solid waste, but our water conservation and energy conservation programs have also benefited from uh, the success of this program. 